Welcome back to the Beard Butcher YouTube channel. Last night I messaged Scott and, and Spencer behind the camera and I was like, hey, I've got an idea for a YouTube video. People always ask, when I buy, buy, buy beef in bulk, how much can I expect to take home? Today, you're gonna find out. Scott's gonna be doing a lot of the uh, explaining, a lot of the scientific part um, with the yield percentages and et cetera, while I'm gonna be doing the cutting. We're gonna get some B-roll of Sean doing some of the boning, the grinders doing their work with grinding out the, uh, the ground meat and the patties. Let's get started. This is our standard cut sheet here at White Feather Meats. We used to do a lot of custom processing. This is the sheet we used. Here's the cuts that you could typically get off of a half of beef. Keeping in mind, some of these come from the same primals, so you can't just get on this sheet and say, I'll take one of everything, because some of them are duplicates. You have to choose one or the other, like bone-in versus boneless. Scott's gonna fill me out some cutting instructions. I'm gonna put it on my clipboard. We're gonna get started. We're gonna cut you half of beef custom style. So Scott's gonna fill that out for me. That way I've got a blueprint to go by. Let's get started. All right, I wanna make it expressly clear. Um, we're a retail butcher now. Um, we have, uh, all of our resources are focused to the front of our store. While we have a lot of knowledge about custom processing, and we previously sold what we call freezer beef, that's no longer something we offer. So if you're watching this video, this is to help empower you, the customer, this is making a resurgence or a comeback when you when, like the cut wrap freeze, freezer beef, freezer pork. And that's fantastic to see whether it was the pandemic, people want meat in their freezer. They want to know where it came from and they want to have this freezer full of meat. So today we want to empower you, the consumer on what to do when it comes time to fill out the cutting instructions. Um, a few things to point out. Number one, how much eating meat will I get? Frankly, there's, there's no exact answer to that. Um, it starts with the livestock itself. If we get um, a dairy breed that's gonna have more bone, it's gonna have less muscle, um, consider the fact that dairy breeds put their nutrition into their, into their milk, not into their muscle. Um, automatically, you're gonna take a hit right there. Um, black hided, typically, we see um, you know, in the industry, Angus, as a standard for, for, for high quality. Um, there's many beef breeds out there that, that can produce different things. You can even go so far as to like a Piedmontese um, that's got a tremendous amount of muscle on it. We've struck a balance here over the years um, with what we have. Um, they would be considered Angus, um, but we've also worked with our producer so that we have a little bit higher um, muscle ratio and less fat because when you buy this, you're buying it by the carcass hanging weight. So what happened is um, the animal was slaughtered. So you had a percentage of the, uh, from hoof to, to the slaughter hanging weight that was already the blood, the bone, or the blood, the, the gut, the hide, the things like that, that went, that were taken away. And then you purchase what we call hot carcass hanging weight is right after that animal is butchered, it goes on to a scale. Um, a lot of this stuff is, is regulated by your state or your industry. That carcass weight is what you pay the butcher. Now, um, sometimes you'll have a two part where you'll pay the farmer for the carcass weight and you'll pay the butcher for a processing fee. It, it depends on whether the butcher has it set up to do it that way. Um, but you're always going to be based off that hanging weight. Now, 390 was the hang weight of this carcass. And then the next step of it is, um, how long does it spend in the dry aging cooler? Now we recommend, and for you processors out there, find a way to go a minimum of five days, just minimum. Or you're, you as the consumer ask, can I get at least five days? It makes a dramatic impact. Seven's better. As a matter of fact, 12 plus um, is the sweet range, 12 to 15 days. Um, because what happens is moisture evaporates out of it and moisture is weight too. So this carcass went from 390 when it came out of the cooler it was at 381. Now we hang this close to 15 days here at White Feather. That gives us the best trade-off between tenderness, flavorness, not too much evaporation loss. 381 pounds, nine pounds, poof, it literally evaporated, went out of the carcass. Now that's just part of it. Um, it's worth it. So why don't we take this now and we're gonna break this down and we're gonna, we're gonna do what we would call like a standard processing or standard cut. Um, that cut, wrap, and freeze has been around for 
40, 50, 60, 70 years. Um, there are some hacks out there, but generally speaking, your butcher is gonna do his very best to make sure you get all the eating meat that you can get off this carcass. So how much eating meat will you receive? Again, it, it varies. Um, this particular animal is probably gonna be right around that 60%. We're gonna weigh the packaged meat at the end of it. The other thing to consider is how much bone was removed during processing, how much bone was left in it. So again, don't get stuck too much because you bought it by the hanging weight and you're trusting your butcher to give you all possible eating meat out of this carcass. So let's get started filling out some cutting instructions and fill your freezer. One thing I do want to mention as Scott makes out these cutting instructions is we have this, this set of cutting info divided in half to where we have the front quarter of beef on the top part portion and the hind quarter on the bottom. So remember, if you call your local farmer and you order a quarter of beef, find out if that's a front quarter, a hind quarter, or a combination of the two because there's certain cuts that you can get on the hind, certain cuts you can get on the front. Necessarily, you know, depending on what you order, you may not receive those. Um, so what you can see behind me here is this is the front quarter, that's the hind quarter. So keep that in mind when you make those cutting instructions, what did you actually order? So as Seth pointed out, front and hind, today we're cutting a half of beef. There's also what we call a half of a half where the butcher will take and he'll split exactly half of the cuts that you get off of a half of beef and that's a true quarter. So when I took cutting instructions, and again, just another one, you're taking the butcher off the block a lot of times when you give your cutting instructions. Um, there's varying amounts of time he can spend with you, he or she. Um, sometimes they'll give you a standard cut where it's just what they cut, um, sort of the rip it and ship it method. We got into highly detailed, customized instructions for our customers. Um, it was a premium service, came at a premium price. You're gonna fall somewhere in there, so we just wanna make you aware of that. Um, so you've got this, uh, this half a beef here. First questions, I, and so back to the thing, you know, you, you, you can't really take 45 minutes of the, the cutter's time off the block to give your cutting instructions. So we hope this helps you understand. First thing, you know, and Seth pointed out, these cuts, sometimes it's an either or. Um, and another thing I'll say, it's like a loaf of bread. If you're gonna cut slices that are an inch and a half thick, you're gonna have fewer pieces of toast than if you cut them three quarters of an inch thick. Certain portions of this animal give us a, a, a certain steak. Once you set your saw at a thickness, you cut to the end of that primal section, you're out. First question I, I would ask customers, you want your steaks bone in or bo boneless? Um, a lot of times there's a charge for this because it, it, it takes longer to make that entire animal boneless than bone in. Bone in or boneless, what thickness you want the steaks. If you do go bone in or boneless, your steaks are gonna change names. You're gonna go from a porterhouse and a T-bone to a strip and a filet. Also, you're gonna go from a rib steak to a rib eye. Um, don't confuse retail cuts that you see in the store. They came from a side of beef like this, but a lot of times you're gonna get bone in versions. So that's what we're gonna go with today. We're gonna to go with bone in. We like to see somewhere in that three quarter to one inch range, three quarter being the very minimum, one inch, your standard inch and a quarter is fine too. Um, so one inch plus or minus a quarter of an inch. If you go down to five eighths or a half an inch, that puts a lot more work on, on the cutter. There's a lot more packaging involved. So we're going with bone in steaks, one inch thick. Um, so you've got your porterhouse, your T-bone, your sirloin, and your rib steak, your four prime steaks that come off of the loin of the beef. And then we move into round steak. Round steak's a little bit different. Round steak is not typically your grilling steak. Um, a standard for that we like to do when we were doing custom processing is do a third regular round steak. That's the big round bone steak, the Fred Flintstone with the, with the round bone in it. Um, we'll do a third of it as a regular round steak. We'll do a third of it as round steak tenderized where we take the bone out, cut it in half, tenderize it. We'll do a third of it as cube steak. Those look more like a burger patty, four to a pound. Those are really nice steaks. So we'll do a third each of those. Another bone in winter time type thing, suit bones. A cross cut of the shank, the marrow bone in the center. Again, if you don't want the meat on the bone as a soup bone, we take the meat from the bone, we grind into hamburger. And then of course your short ribs, again, a bone in type thing. We don't get into explaining much of the cooking, but around different seasonal changes, you might want soup bones 
and short ribs. So those are, those are two of those sort of auxiliary cuts along with your brisket and flank that need to be talked about. Again, if they're not cut, they're gonna add to your ground beef. And then we get into our roast. How many roasts would you like off of your side of beef? Now, anything that we don't cut as a steak or a roast can be turned into stew meat or of course ground beef. Every single piece of this eating beef will go into your, your packaged meat, whether it's as a steak, roast, or of course it'll add to your ground beef. Roast, you can get a total of 18 to 20 of the roast at two to three pounds each. So suddenly you're right around 45 pounds of roast. That's a lot of roast. Um, a lot of times what I would steer people to is say, think how many times am I gonna eat roast in a week or a month? So winter time, you're gonna eat more roast, but it typically falls into that dozen range. Um, so we like to cut the dozen or maybe 15 best roasts. We like to make them about two to three pounds a piece. So you're gonna have your chuck roasts, which come off of the front quarter. You're gonna have your round roasts that come off of the hind quarter. Chuck roasts naturally have more fat and bone. Hind roasts, they're leaner and they're boneless. Um, now that we've got our roast figured out, the, the remaining pieces of uh, uh, parts off of this are your brisket, your flank. Those are easy pull-off cuts. Um, you, keep in mind, you only get one brisket, one flank off of your side. And then we get our stew meat, or, or, or uh, we can do a few strips of uh, fajita or stir fry meat. Um, and then the rest is ground beef. So ground beef, you're gonna have roughly half of your take home weight as your steaks, roasts, and cuts, and half of your take home weight as ground beef. So you should then determine if your butcher has the, ca the capability of making ground beef patties, what portion of it do you want made into patties? Do you wanna go with half of your, your weight? So we reduce this carcass by about, I'm, I'm guessing here, but I think with this carcass, we're gonna wind up with about 60 or 62% yield off of that 381 that we have now. And with this cutout, I think, and I'm just making a, a guess here after years of experience, we're gonna have somewhere right around 100 pounds of ground beef. That's a good safe estimate. 100 pounds, so now you think, how much of that do I want into patties? Um, how much of it do I want into bulk? What time of year it is? If it's winter, you're not gonna be doing as many of the patties. Um, I typically tell people that the ratio that's best served them is three quarters of it into bulk and one quarter of, of the total weight into patties. If you don't feel like that's enough patties, you do a lot of summertime grilling, just it up to two thirds of it into bulk and one third of it into patties. So that's what we're gonna go with today. We're gonna to do two thirds of the ground meat into one pound bulk packages and one third of the, patty, one -third of the ground meat into pre-made patties. Now that we've got all that figured out, I can fill out my sheet, Seth gets started cutting, and you get to see what it looks like as this starts coming across the packing table and it's eventually gonna wind up in your freezer. So as I'm cutting, Sean's gonna be over here working at the table. You guys have said you wanna see more of Sean. So today, we didn't only bring you one Sean, we brought you two. So <laughs> he gets to work with his silent partner over there today. Let's get started. Keeping in mind when we cut this custom cut half, if you've watched our previous how to cut a beef video, um, you're gonna see a lot of cuts in there that maybe you don't see today on our table because we did more of a retail style cut. We did the skirt steaks, the flat irons, the tri-tips, all those things. Um, those aren't necessarily custom style cuts. So today, just keeping in mind, we are cutting truly custom style. You know, one of the jobs in this industry that gets overlooked a lot when you're custom processing is this portion right here, like our niece Alyssa is doing. The scraping portion, the packaging portion, this is all a lot of hard work. Attention to detail, getting that product in a package that at the end of the day, the customer is going to like what they see, they buy it, and it's something they're going to want to eat. So get somebody that can do this job and you'll be all set. So talking about this round portion here for a second, when you give your cutting instructions, keep in mind this round is made up of three main muscles, top round, bottom round, eye of round. And with those, you can do round steak, round steak tenderized or cube steak, or you can save for London broils, or you can do jerky, or you can do stir fry. You can do ground meat, you can do canning meat. There's many different things you can do. Today, we are going to do a third, third, and a third, which is gonna be third round steak, third round steak tenderized, and a third cube steak. 
So this boning table, this is where we take out any large chunks of fat. Um, and then we make our uh, boneless pieces to be ground out in a burger. And then of course, if we have any lean um, whole muscle pieces, we'll make them into the stew beef. So this is an important part of it because this is where we take bones out. Can't grind bones in your hamburger unless you want crunchy hamburger. Take ex excessive gristle or connective tissue out. Take excess fat like big chunks of this out and grind it all up into a nice lean ground beef. Let's check out the ground beef. Two thirds bulk, one pound packages. Beautiful ground beef. We don't know the fat percentage. We don't analyze it. It's gonna be somewhere just looking at this about 85, 15. Beautiful. So there's our bulk one pound packages. We dumped the remainder of it in here. We're gonna form the patties. Again, just, just really nice, beautiful grind. So we'll make out these patties. We'll marry up the cuts with the ground beef. We're gonna have a mixture of vacuum sealing, roll stock packaging. We'll get it on a cart. We'll put it in our freezer. It's gonna be beautiful. And then we'll do a final tally by weighing it to see what our actual package yield was. <laughs> I asked him to get out of the shot <laughs> and apparently he thinks that's ideal hiding behind the table back there. Just trying to do my thing. We have the half of beef processed. It's time for an overview. I took the cutting instructions that Scott filled out. I think I cut it to a T, but let's find out. So the way I have this on my table is I have the front quarter on this side, the hind quarter on this side. So you can see the separation between the two. If you were to buy a front quarter of a beef, this is what you would get. If you were to buy a hind quarter of a beef, this is what you would get. Now, if you buy a split quarter, and what that means is you take a half and you split it right down the middle, you do half of the front and half the hind, you could take all of these items on the table and mix them and then divide the two. So hopefully that clears things up for you a little bit. Now, if you were or to order a whole beef, take all of this, simple math, double it. So that's the overview on that portion. Now let's just go down through the table. We'll explain some of the cuts that we got off of this and then we'll go from there. So on the front quarter, we have three soup bones. We have six of the chuck roast, cut two to three pounds, keeping in mind, if you cut them bigger, you're gonna get less roast. If you cut them smaller, you're gonna get more. There again, simple math. We cut four short rib chunks. We have 10 pounds of stew meat. Now this stew meat is, and the stir fry, is a portion from the front and hind. So keep in mind, um, if you got just a front quarter, just a hind quarter, you could most likely take this and split it in half since um, this is the entire amount of stew meat off that, that entire half. Four arm roasts, two bone in, two boneless, we got 14 rib steaks. Like Scott mentioned earlier, the thicker you cut them, the less you're gonna get, the thinner you cut them, the more steaks you're gonna get. We also got a beef brisket off that front quarter. Um, this is a point, this is a flat. If we were gonna cut this as quarters, we would have to cut this in half and give a customer a portion of each of this. Somebody's gonna get the point, somebody's gonna get the flat. That's just the way it goes when you split stuff with a half of a beef. Moving on to the hind quarter, we got 32 pieces of cube steak. We have three soup bones off that hind shank. We have three round tip roasts. We have a little stack of sirloin steak ends. We have two rolled rumps. We have six pieces of round steak tenderized. We have three pieces of round steak. And only because the reason why we have half as many is because we left these whole. These were cut in half. So we have six pieces and three pieces. We have seven porterhouse steaks. We have eight T-bones, we have six sirloins, plus 
those end pieces. And then we also have a flank stake. As mentioned earlier, keeping in mind, this is a custom style cut. This is what you would expect to see. This is the bone in version. You're not gonna see tri-tips. You're not gonna see skirt stakes. You're not gonna see fancy Denver cuts and, and you know, that, that type of thing because we, we simply cut this as a custom and we wanted to portray that to you out in front here on this table. So that's the overview. Hopefully you gained some knowledge with this. On to the final portion on the buggy. Scott's gonna go uh, over that with you. That looks great. It's on one of our freezer buggies. Everything's sealed up, packed up. And we put it in these wire baskets because that way it's gonna flash freeze quickly and freeze throughout. So we put this in the freezer, come back and we'll box it up tomorrow. It's the next day. This half of beef has had a chance to sit in the freezer overnight on the buggy and freeze. Sean and I are gonna get it in boxes. Once we get it in boxes, we'll see how many boxes it takes um, to fit all of it in. And then we're going to get it on a scale. We're gonna weigh it. And then we're gonna figure out the percentage of yield from the time it was hanging to when we put it on the scale to when it went in a box. So let's grab the buggy. You saw it go in the freezer. You saw it come out. Everything rock hard. Beautiful vacuum sealed packages. You can see that when I cut these, I knocked this bone off a little bit to keep from uh, breaking the seal on that package. One thing our dad taught us back when we did custom processing, we would go through the buggy and we would count every single piece. We always crossed our T's and dotted our I's and if we counted every single piece and wrote it down on the customer's cutting slip, if they called back in, you know, maybe they said, hey, I didn't get X amount of something, we could go back and verify on the cutting slip. And in fact, they did receive that. And nine times out of 10, if not all time, um, they would be like, oh yeah, by the way, I had an extra box that I wasn't accounted for. Or, oh, by the way, I found it in my freezer. So um, just one of those extra things that we did is we went through and counted every single piece on this buggy just so we had some paperwork um, verifying what the customer was getting. Sean, how many beef do you reckon you've put in a box over the years? Well, and pork. We used to slaughter seven, eight hundred cattle a year and a thousand pigs a year. That's seven, eight hundred cattle, a thousand pigs a year we used to put in boxes. 25 plus years. The man has boxed some meat over the years, let me tell you. So if you look at these boxes, this is a 20 by 15 by eight box. So that'll give you an idea on the size of the box that we're using. Works really good, patties fit in it good, bulk meat, you know, the ground meat fits in it really well. So 20 by 15 by eight, it's a perfect size box. <laughs> Four of the big boxes, the 20 by 15 by eights. The last box, 19 and a half by 12 and a half by seven and a half. So we got this meat, this entire side in four of our bigger boxes and one of our smaller box. Now you do have to remember, we didn't put any organ meats in. We didn't put any dog bones or anything like that. Um, so check with your processor if you want um, dog bones and organ meats, etc. Another thing that Sean's doing over here is he's marking on the end of the box how many boxes we have. That way when the customer would have come pick it up, um, we know this is YouTube times five. Back where we all started yesterday, 
right on the same scale where we weigh these, this front and hind. And let's get it back on the scale. Keeping in mind, we do have to subtract the weight of the boxes. So nine and a half pounds of our total weight, we're gonna subtract off for the cardboard. So 275.30. Let's do a little math. So 275.30 minus 9.5, 265.8 is our finished boxed weight. So 390 was the weight of the half when it came out of the cooler. That's the weight we're gonna use. Um, the eight pounds difference, we're gonna include that in the, in the loss. So 390 times point 6.8 gives us 265.2. And if you remember right, 265.880 was our finished box weight. So we are exactly at 0 0.68, 68% yield. Scott mentioned that this beef was gonna yield really well. Um, less fat cover, more muscle, not super heavy boned animal like a big Holstein or something like that. So. A 68% yield is phenomenal um, on bulk beef like this. The fatter the beef, the worse the yield. Big bony animal, the worse the yield. So keep that in mind. Um, this customer, if we would have been selling this half, would be extremely thrilled with 68%. Or in a retail environment like ours, you know, we're going to sell in the retail. You always want a better yield because yield obviously um, in return ends up being more money. So 68% uh, fantastic yield. A little bit of a recap here, figuring this steer weighed about 1300 pounds live, 780 hanging in the cooler. We pulled out that half that weighed 390. We had a 68% yield leaving 265.80 in these boxes. That's for a half. If you wanted a whole beef, double it. If you wanted a quarter of beef, split the half amounts in half. So that's a recap, 68% yield, dressed phenomenal. We think it's gonna taste great as well. Thanks for following along on the Bearded Butcher's YouTube channel. We hope you enjoyed this one. Share it with your family, share it with your friends. Let's educate the consumer. Hopefully this video helps other butcher shops out as well because an educated customer calling in, giving cutting instructions, is the best customer you can have because a big portion of taking cutting info with a consumer is the education process. Um, unfortunately, there's some butcher shops out there that don't even give people the option. So um, hopefully your butcher does. That way you get exactly what you want in your freezer to feed your families sitting around that dinner table. Thanks for watching, stay tuned, and don't forget, hit subscribe, Follow us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram. There's a ton more to come. Have a good one.